as you see, I'm back on YouTube. This is the first video I've made in a long, long time. Sorry for the wait and sorry for being away for so long, but two of the reasons why I've been away for so long, as you can tell just from the background, I moved into a new place. That took a little longer than I expected. I've been moved in here since early November. One of the other reasons why I wasn't able to do videos a little earlier than I wanted to was had to do a little work on my computer, upgraded it to Windows uh, 8, and because of that, my old webcam was no longer compatible with it, so I had to buy this new webcam, which I am filming this off of. Hopefully, if you're seeing this on YouTube right now, which if you are, obviously the uh, video and audio is working perfectly fine. Hopefully, I have no problem with that, because I know some Logitech webcams do have some problems with audio, hopefully, the audio is sounding good for all y'all, um, but um, as you, as I said, I haven't been on here for a while. The last review I've done was, uh, last review I did was uh, Money in the Bank back in July. Um, since then, you know, the WWE product, I mean, I haven't really missed much. I've kept, I've seen all, you know, the WWE shows. I called up with what I missed, uh, missed over the last couple months as far as watching some stuff from New Japan, which I'll get into that. In this video, I'll be talking about uh, Wrestle Kingdom 9 from New Japan Pro Wrestling, uh, the Royal Rumble from this past Sunday, my thoughts on it, the whole so-called controversy with Roman Reigns winning. Obviously, like others, I... Wasn't a huge fan of Roman Reigns winning, but I probably didn't hate it as much as others, even though it was probably one of the worst booked Rumble matches. At least you did get the great triple threat last Sunday on the on the the pay per view. But as far as WWE's product, um, since you know my last time doing a review, um, even if I missed everything, I would say I haven't really missed much, even though I caught up with and watched all of it. A lot of what I caught up and watched wasn't much of anything. I mean, SummerSlam wasn't too bad. I got to admit, that wasn't too bad of a show. Um, probably one of the better shows since my last review of Money in the Bank because a lot of the shows this fall and early winter in WWE have pretty much been atrocious. I'm not that not that good of a product uh, right at the current moment. Um, some things seem to maybe be turning around a little bit, uh, but a lot of things are just not quite working in WWE right now as far as the wrestling product. Um, you know, over the fall, you know, there was a few things that I thought could have been a whole lot better. Like the Ambrose and Rollins feud, while it wasn't bad, I was expecting something great from it. Unfortunately, we didn't get that. Stuff with uh, Ambrose and Bray Wyatt was fairly good, but just like Rollins and Ambrose, nothing great. A few good matches, but nothing like match of the year worthy like you would expect from them. Obviously, the biggest, big note, biggest noteworthy thing that has happened since I uh, haven't been on here is Sting making his first WWE appearance back at Survivor Series. I mean, everyone going into Survivor Series that day knew it was pretty much a guarantee we're going to be seeing Sting that night, which we did. But just like other people, I'm probably not the only one that was like, I'll believe it when I see it. And, you know, that that was huge, seeing Sting in a WWE ring. Never thought that moment would happen. Um, as far as Sting and Triple H, as far as a match at WrestleMania, don't think it'll be bad, but it doesn't scream big box office draw or dream match. I um, wish we would be getting a dream match, even though I think match quality wise, Sting and Triple H would be better than Sting and Undertaker, but at least Sting and Undertaker, you get the whole idea of a dream match. It's something people would want to see. Um, whereas, how many people ever said the statement, Gee, I can't wait to see Sting and Triple H take on each other if Sting ever comes to WWE. No one has ever uttered that sentence or even thought about wanting to see them two against each other. Um, it's not a dream match, but I don't think it'll be bad. Um, but uh, then I'll then I'm going to get into the one thing that has to happen over the time of me being gone that has been one of the best things in wrestling, which is the debut of Lucha Underground on the El Rey Network. Um, easily the best wrestling show on TV currently. If you don't have the El Rey Network, which obviously a lot of people don't at, at, at the current point, I think it's only available on cable, and I think Dish or Direct might have just recently added it, but if you don't get the El Rey Network, find some way, Torrance or... Um, Daily Motion or something, find some way to go out your way to watch Lucha Underground. Easily the best wrestling on TV. Um, the other 
great thing that has happened since I've been off uh, is New Japan Pro Wrestling. Um, not only Jim Ross and Matt, uh, Matt Stryker calling uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling's Wrestle Kingdom 9 and that being on U.S. pay-per-view, but you now have uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling on Access TV um, being called by Josh Barnett and Mario Ronaldo. If you haven't seen those episodes, even though the matches are like two years old, that is some of the best commentating and the best produced shows of wrestling I have seen. Um, episode three got praise from Dave Meltzer saying it was one of the greatest hours of wrestling ever produced and I pretty much will agree with it it was excellent and um, it even even matches you've seen a number of times um, just somehow Mario Ronaldo and uh, Josh Barnett somehow make them even better and that's something I would recommend everyone to see so it, you got alternatives like for people that have a problem with WWE's current product which there's a lot of things to complain about WWE's current product and TNA's current product as well, which they've debuted on Destination America. Um, seems like they still have the same problems, even though they're on a different network. I was kind of wishing that TNA would have had a little, you know, possibly, you know, reju rejuvenation and revitalized a few things and maybe made their product better, even though they don't have the best current roster. I was kind of hoping that maybe the product would improve, but we still got the same booking and everything. Nothing's really changed there. Obviously, the alternatives that you got from WWE and TNA at the moment, Lucha Underground on El Rey Network. Um, you got New Japan Pro Wrestling on Access TV. Like, even though I said the matches are, you know, close to two years old, somehow it's, even if you've seen the matches before, somehow they are making that, that shit great. And you got, you know, NXT on the WWE Network and Ring of Honor TV, which... Uh, the one thing since I've been gone, which is my uh, area, finally got Ring of Honor TV. So even though I watched Ring of Honor TV on their on Ring of Honor's website for a long time, since my area did not have it, um, now you know my area has it finally. Now it seems like almost Sinclair, with Sinclair Broadcasting, if you live on the East Coast, you pretty much have a good shot of having Ring of Honor in your area. Um, in, in my state of Virginia, uh, Norfolk and Richmond had it for a long, long time, probably since the beginning that Sinclair Broadcasting started airing Ring of Honor. My area of Lynchburg took a whole lot longer, I guess, with some of the mergers of networks, the takeover of networks from Sinclair Broadcasting. That kind of legal issue took a little longer before it finally got picked up, but I got that. So um, there's a lot of alternatives for casual fans that have a problem with WWE or TNA right now on TV, which, you know, Jeff Jarrett, I would say he is pretty much on crack if he thinks that there's going to be another wrestling boom. But the one thing is, even though I don't agree with his theory of a wrestling boom is going to happen, at least now on television, you got a lot of alternatives. Like there's a lot of fans that like say, ah, I don't want to go out of my way to watch a uh, indie show on iPay-Per-View or a uh, Japanese wrestling show on iPay-Per-View. Now you got alternatives right now that are right at the click of your finger, uh, right at, right at on your remote. You can watch them on TV um, and a lot of alternatives right now. But as far as what I wanted to actually talk about, as far as show-wise, I want to go into my thoughts on uh, New Japan's Wrestle Kingdom 9. I'm going to give my thoughts on that first, which uh, easily the best wrestling, sh probably will be the best wrestling show of the year. I mean, the only thing that could possibly beat Wrestle Kingdom 9 is maybe a few nights of the G1 Climax from New Japan in July and August. That might be the only thing that could possibly top it, but I don't know if that could even top it because this was a show that had probably the best double main event of all time. I'm, when I'm giving my thoughts on Rust Kingdom 9 and the Royal Rumble, I'm not going to go in depth because I don't want to make this video too, too long. It's going to be probably lengthy. It'll probably end up being a 20, 30 minute video, but I don't want this to drag on too, too long. So when I'm going through it, I'm more or less going to give my thoughts of eh, what, I, what I thought of match wise. You know, I think it was a great match and what I thought people need to go out their way to see on the show. So as far as, you know, Wrestle Kingdom 9, I mean, and the other thing is I watched this on uh, New Japan World. I did end up hearing Jim Ross's commentary with Matt Strike, which I thought was good. It wasn't great. Uh, when you hear Jim Ross and Matt Schreier call New Japan, then compare it to Josh Barnett and Mario Ronaldo calling it, obviously the cl clear winner there is 
Ronaldo and Barnett, but Jim Ross did good. I mean, there's a few things that they had problems with on the show as far as calling certain things, but other than that, you know, Jim Ross calling it was still great to hear, even though when I watched it live, I watched it on New Japan World. That's another thing. If you haven't signed up for the New, New Japan World, sign up for it. It's 9.99 yen, which is about 8.40, 8.50. Um, in U.S. dollars, it's clearly the best wrestling network, I would say now, even with the WWE Network. Unlike other people, when I get into my thoughts on the Rumble, I didn't fall in the camp of canceling the WWE Network, but I did at least love seeing that some of the people that did cancel the WWE Network did choose the alternative of New Japan World as their alternative saying, we're going to dump the WWE Network and get New Japan World, even though I don't endorse the idea of canceling the WWE Network, because I think... $9.99 a month, even with WWE's current product. They put enough good stuff on the network as far as like NXT and the NXT special that will be happening in February. They put enough on there that it justifies paying $9.99 a month, even with the current stale and pretty lackluster poor product. But let me get into uh, Wrestle Kingdom 9. Um, you had a uh, New Japan uh, Royal Rumble on the pre-show, which... You know, had a you know a lot of the old timers in it, some you know mid carters and lower level guys. Um, it was fun for what it was. It was nothing spectacular, but it was fun. I mean, hell, you had Fujiwara, his old ass actually came out there. He was involved in here. Um, it was it was fun for what it was, and it was good that Yuji Nagata won the Royal Rump New Japan Rumble. Um, it was a sad thing seeing Yuji Nagata on the pre-show and not a part of the regular show. Um, I thought they could have possibly had him be a part of the regular show in some type of match, um, maybe in one of the uh, against the Bullet Club and one of the six in the six man or something. Maybe they could have done that, but they at least had him win there. And the stuff you saw on, saw on Wrestle Kingdom Nine, which was great, you had the great opening uh, tag of the for the IWGP Tag Team Titles, Junior Tag Team Titles of Red Dragon versus the Forever Hooligans versus. The Time Splitters versus Young Bucks, great way to kick the show off. Really great stuff. Uh, they even made the uh, Jeff Jarrett six-man tag entertaining. Um, even though the match with, uh, even though the eight-man tag that included uh, Suzuki Gun on one side and the Noah guys, uh, Marafuji and Team Team DK on the other side, even though it didn't get the proper amount of time, it was entertaining for what it was, and that's a real ang that's a really good angle right now. Within New Japan Pro Wrestling slash Pro Wrestling Noah, the invasion of Suzuki Gun and Pro Wrestling Noah. If you haven't seen that, that was done great. I'll probably put that link in the description if you haven't seen that. Um, they made that entertaining. Uh, you saw a technical masterpiece with uh, Minoru Suzuki and Sakuraba. That was some great stuff. You saw a hard hitting, brutal match with one of the, you know, best tough guys in the business now and Ishii I mean he's a fucking beast every time he's in there he delivers a great match him and Makabe uh, had a, an incredible brawl just loved everything they did with each other that was a great match uh, even though the IWGP junior heavyweight title match with Omega uh, Kenny Omega and Taguchi wasn't necessarily a great match you at least have, saw something great which was Kenny Omega winning the title and now that's probably going to add you know much more prestige with the title because not like like other people i didn't like the taguchi reign as IWG, iwgp junior heavyweight champion with omega with it now you probably gonna see some great stuff uh down the line with him as as champion uh then it got to the stuff that made this show one of the best shows of all time which started off with uh the uh tag match of Go uh, goto and shibata teaming up where they won the IWGP Tag Team titles against Doc Gallows and Carl Carl Anderson, representing the Bullet Club. Um, that was easily the best tag match I've seen uh, Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson have against Goto and Shibato. Shibata, it was a really good, really fun match. And then after this is when it just got crazy. Like everything was, well, before this you had some four-star matches with Ishii and Makabe and... Um, the Suzuki and uh, Suzuki and Sakuraba match, but this is where everything was four stars or higher. And as you see in the main events, 
you know, five stars and four and three, four stars quality of matches. Started with AJ and Naito. Um, I thought they had a better match, uh, I think, earlier on, in, er, early sometime last year in New Japan. Uh, but this was really good. I liked AJ and Naito and the ending with, you know, selling how dangerous the Styles Clash is, him hitting the Styles Clash off the top rope. That was some great stuff. And then, uh, knock, uh, then the match, the match probably will easily be match of the year. I mean, I don't know what could possibly beat it. At least at the moment, early match of the year and a five-star match. Nakamura and Kota Ibushi. Um, this was an incredible match. Uh, one of the best matches I probably have ever seen. Uh, just loved everything about the Nakamura and Ibushi match. Match every everyone needs to go out their way to see. And then you had, after a five-star match of that caliber, you'd be like, I would hate to be the fucking people that had... I would hate to be someone that had to go out there after a match like Nakamura and Ibushi. Every wrestler would hate that. But, you know, somehow, Tanahashi and Okada, with their great feud they've had with each other, they went out there. Now, they didn't have a five-star match, but they had close to a five-star match. Some people actually have said it was a five-star match as well as the Nakamura and Ibushi match, but... Tanahashi and Okada was great. You know, that was one of the best double main events I've ever seen. As far as the show, I give it a 10 out of 10. Um, as far as all my ratings for that show, uh, Wrestle Kingdom 9, you'll see it down in the description. Now, after Wrestle Kingdom 9, after talking about a great show uh, from New Japan for Wrestling and Wrestle Kingdom 9, now go to a less great show. Not that good of a show from WWE. The WWE Royal Rumble from this past Sunday, now... I'm not going to give give my thoughts in depth with the whole show because that would take too long. But mainly, what else? If you want to see all my ratings for this, just like uh, Russell King Nine, just look down in the descriptions uh, for it. Um, as far as the Royal Rumble, um, what I would say is you had an incredible triple threat match with John Cena versus Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar for the WWE title. Um, a four and a half star match, great match. Probably one of the, probably will be one of WWE's best matches of the year. And somehow WWE, you know, booked such a perfect world title match that felt like a WrestleMania quality match. It was felt it was big match atmosphere, and everything was great about it. Nothing was bad about it. It was booked perfectly. And then somehow after booking such a great, great world title match, you somehow were able to book one of the worst Royal Rumbles of all time. And now before me giving my thoughts on the Royal Rumble, I have to say, now, unlike other people, you know, I did not hate the Royal Rumble match, and I have to get this out there first, because obviously everyone that, you know, hates the Royal Rumble match this year, I think a lot of people hate it because Dan and Ryan didn't win. But that's not, a lot of people don't hate it for that reason. It was just a poorly booked match. Um, now, since Daniel Bryan returned, um, I would have probably had him win since you had him return. It would been almost like in 2002, Triple H returning and not winning the Rumble in 2002. So if you were going to book Daniel Bryan this way, you should have saved his return for after the Royal Rumble. I think if you would have did that, a lot of fans would have, you would have got less backlash from the fans. But the other thing that is lost in the mix here and not many people are talking about is a lot of people are talking about how, you know, Doug, WWE screwed over Daniel Bryan, and he should have won the Royal Rumble, but really the person that got screwed the most, and I don't think he is ready or a big box office draw enough to be in a title match at WrestleMania, but hey, he's over with the fans, the fans like him, and the way you've been booking him since Survivor Series, you've been it would almost made sense of Dolph Ziggler winning, and Dolph Ziggler gets eliminated within two or three minutes in there, and then... The other thing that made it worse was the only good part of it, you did have Bray Wyatt look pretty strong within it. But then you had, you know, two guys and two big giants in the big show and Kane dominating people and looking like the looking like they're the best in there. And that was like one of the worst parts is goddamn Kane and Big Show are the, are a part of the final four within the Royal Rumble or close to the final four in the Royal Rumble. Well, they actually were a part of the final four in the Royal Rumble, and that was just bad. Um, you know, just the one thing with Roman Reigns winning, I think WWE, you know, with the way they've been booking Reigns as far as this terrible, terrible promos he's been delivering, which Reigns just needs to go back to when he was in the Shield and not talk that much, 
deliver his shit in the ring, basically be the badass motherfucker that just goes in there to kick your ass and barely says a word. That's what they need to have Roman Reigns be if they want to have him be over enough by the time of WrestleMania and make sense and the fans not revolt when he becomes world champion, which will probably happen at, the, at WrestleMania, possibly. Um, then, you know, they probably, they, they pretty much tried their best to save Roman Reigns, you know, because they knew they were going to get this backlash because they had The Rock there. The Rock came out there, and The Rock didn't even save Roman Reigns from the booze from the crowd. I mean, hell, you had Rusev uh, be the final person that Reigns eliminated because he played the whole thing of, you know, we haven't seen Rusev, and he wasn't actually eliminated. He comes in, tries to sneak up and eliminate Reigns, and Reigns eliminates him. And the fucking, you know, Ant anti-American gimmick of, you know, the uh, pro, uh, pro Vladimir Putin gimmick of Rusev got fucking cheered. I mean, I know it was up north, but still he got cheered. I mean, is WWE going to hope that that doesn't happen at WrestleMania? Because they are doing Cena and Rusev at WrestleMania because at Fastlane we're going to get it, but obviously that's just going to be, you know, a continuation of the few. They'll probably have some, you know, finish to it like DQ or count out then continue at WrestleMania, but Aren't they worried that Cena and Rusev, Rusev might get a face reaction um, at WrestleMania? Unless they do some things with Rusev and Lana the next couple weeks going into WrestleMania, um, they would have to go like, you know, Iron Sheik, Slaughter, early 91 level, I think, to get heel heat and make sure Cena gets the face reaction, i.e., you know, act like you're going to do something against the American flag. That's how you're going to have to get Rusev heel heat and make sure Cena gets completely cheered at WrestleMania against Rusev, which probably he'll end up uh, defeating uh, Rusev, and that'll probably be the person that ends the undefeated streak of Rusev, which I think everyone already saw that coming. Um, but as far as Royal Rumble, as you as you see, you know, I love the uh, title match that they had on their triple threat. The Rumble match, not so much. Um, as you see, I'll have my ratings in the description. I mean, with the Royal Rumble, I mean, it, this is how bad it was. The pre-show match was probably my second favorite match of the night. That's how weak the undercard was and how bad the Royal Rumble match was. But then after, okay, then I talked about Royal Rumble and I talked about uh, New Japan's uh, Wrestle Kingdom 9 and obviously telling people to sign up for New Japan World. Now I want to kind of get my praise of Lucha Underground, which has been one of the best things that's come on the wrestling scene since it debuted back in October. Um, I caught up with the first few episodes in uh, November and um, loved it from episode one. It just keeps getting better and better. I mean, not only do they give you pay-per-view quality matches every single week for the most part, and even the weeks they don't give you maybe a pay-per-view quality match, it's the most sound booking and some of the best wrestling you will see on television on a weekly basis. So it's easily the best show. I mean, if the shows that everyone needs to see, if you speaking of the Royal Rumble, was you need to see Aztec Warfare from Lucha Underground. There, it wasn't a Royal Rumble match because it was elimination penfall, penfall submission wise, but it was basically a Royal Rumble. Tw Twenty people involved, and it was just craziness. And you know, one of the uh, one of the best matches you're gonna see on tele on probably television that wasn't a pay-per-view match or a match from New Japan Pro Wrestling. Probably one of the best matches you'll see of the year. It was just some great, great, great stuff. Loved it. Um, Love the stuff they're doing with uh, Prince Puma, a.k.a. Ricochet. Um, smart uh, smart booking as far as him being champion. Him and Phoenix had a hell of a match uh, on the 14th of this month. Um, the begin the two shows at the beginning of this year are like I highly recommend. You know, the one with Aztec Warfare, then uh, with... Uh, Prince Puma and Phoenix, and then even since then, they've done some great stuff. I mean, saw a really good uh, uh, six-man tag this past week. I mean, just some really, really good stuff. You just want some great wrestling with sound booking. I mean, even some of the stuff that you think would not not uh, would not work like the old idea of the authority figure like how many people ran against the idea of authority figure and how bad that is somehow lucha underground makes it work with dario corto just makes it work perfect and everything is great about lucha underground everyone needs to see that and obviously I already gave my thoughts on the whole new japan on access tv highly recommend everyone to see that so um to the people that you know 
said, you know, they were canceling the WWE Network and had a problem with the WWE Network because of what happened at the Royal Rumble. I just hope those same people that canceled the, their subscription to the WWE Network would at least check out some alternatives because the one thing is a lot of these fans that are bitching about WWE say they want to see some great wrestling. Well, sign up for New Japan Pro, New Japan World. You see some great wrestling there on the L Ray Network if you get it, or even if you don't get it, find some way to watch it. You see Lucha Underground every week. Some great stuff. Ring of Honor TV is consistently good as well, as well as NXT on the WWE Network, which is one of the main reasons why I will never uh, unsubscribe from the WWE Network is because of NXT, even though I know it is available on Hulu. Um, I enjoyed the live specials that they do, you know, on a quarterly basis. Um, you don't get that on Hulu. So I know people will say, well, you could, drop the network and see um, the NXT shows on uh, Hulu, but you don't get the specials as well, which is looking like, you know, we're going to see some really good wrestling this February with uh, New Japan Road Wrestling, the new beginning show on the 11th and 14th, uh, the NXT special on February 11th, then Ring of Honor's pay-per-view, um, which barely anyone's talking about at this point, but you still got, you're still a month away, but I think closer it's going to get, People are going to really talk about that show as well because you have Red Dragon, the Young Bucks, uh, four-way title match. It looks real good. And Alberto Del Rio, which I haven't even got into him. Alberto Del Rio, you know, working with Ring of Honor, doing a debuting on Lucha Underground, which on the 11th when NXT is going to be doing their special. I think that's the episode where uh, Alberto Del Rio is going to be debuting on Lucha Underground. So some really good stuff wrestling-wise outside of WWE and TNA. Let's just hope that... We get a good WrestleMania. At this point, it looks like go either way. Could be good, could be bad. We'll just have to wait and see how that goes. And the other thing is I wish TNA would do much better than they are, but it just seems like they're stuck in the same pattern of not wanting to do anything to uh, really you know, improve their product, which it just seems like you know the same bad show that was on, M on uh, Spike TV you get the same bad product on Destination America, but the one thing is they have, you know, even though they only got close to like 500,000 viewers, TNA has, you know, does have somewhat of a loyal fan base because they are consistently getting more viewers on Destination America. So that, that is at least a good thing for TNA, but I just wish their product would improve. So I know this video kind of has gone off the rails a little bit. I probably went through, you know, and talked about some things that went back to talk about others. Just hope it got to get got together good. And like I said, uh, as far as you know, I'll, I'll put a few my all all my uh, ratings for the Royal Rumble and Wrestle Kingdom Nine will be in the description. I'll put a, a link in there as well for the stuff they've done in uh, New Japan uh, Pro Wrestling. As far at not New Japan Pro Wrestling, but Pro Wrestling Noah. As far as the Suzuki Gun angle, if you have not seen that stuff, I highly recommend checking it out. And seems like Pro Wrestling Noah this year, because of the whole New Japan angle with uh, Suzuki Gun, finally Pro Wrestling Noah is back almost to the greatness they were years ago. So, uh, yeah, that's it for my video here, um, and I'll see you later. Peace.